Hi guys, welcome back to a new episode of Ride Along. Today, we're going to meet Rachel Bene, an interior designer with Symbion International, an architectural firm that's doing some amazing things in the landscape of Uganda. Not only is she an interior designer, but an entrepreneur as well. So come along, let's meet her. Welcome, Rachel, to this ride along with me. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel, you're welcome. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Appreciate you having me here. Yes, so mm -hmm. I have known Rachel for a long time since secondary school, and we both used to sit and talk about how wanting to do interior design, me wanting to do architecture, architecture. and it was mm -hmm. just. Uh, and now here we are, here all these years and later. And we used to be neighbors. Yeah, neighbors, yes. even in dormitory, neighbors. Mm -hmm. Jenny too much history <laughs> so yeah so I mean we talked about it for a long time and you actually went and pursued it because when you talk about interior design I used to wonder but we don't offer to interior design so where did you go to do your interior design and a lot of people did actually quite know what interior design was about to begin with mm. um, but I studied in South Africa at the university called Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University in a really lovely quiet town called Port Elizabeth yeah yeah so that's where I did interior design for about four years and then I worked in Pretoria for about a year I worked with the property development group doing interior design they had a, a, a showroom where they used to sell like different construction materials you can see so that was actually quite interesting mm. and they developed housing properties they developed a few commercial properties mm. so yeah that experience in itself was um, it was quite a learning curve also mm. knowing like where all the materials come from how construction actually works mm. it was very helpful for me <laughs> in the beginning after school but is that something that you wanted to do kind of mm, or after school you were well not particularly i think i just figured i'll get whatever work experience i can get mm -hmm. before trying to um, settle with either an interior design firm or an architecture firm was your goal always to come back to uganda uh it was actually and for some reason i always saw myself uh, working at home and because i knew already from maybe way back when that there was like a lot of potential for interior design here just um, it needed almost like a bit more exposure for mm. people to know what it's about mm. and to study uh, the thing that's related right the thing that actually means interior design not decorating or anything decorating. else yeah. now they've been working for symbion for how many years for four years this year it will be four years and how has it been like in terms of one, the work experience, but also just working in the context of Uganda. Uh, it's been interesting to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. I think the first uh, six months or like a year that I was at Symbian, mm -hmm. it was really finding my bearings and also learning, you know, what the market is, what um, interior design means to Uganda. And maybe I was lucky or blessed to have been. Uh, to have gotten a position with Symbian because since they were already an established architectural firm I kind of came on board on two projects that they already had yeah it wasn't so much residentials but more commercial uh, projects a few hospitality projects like apartments hotels and stuff like that yeah um, but my goal had always been to focus in hospitality and like retail projects things that are a bit more exciting with brands etc did they have like an interior design department before mm. you came? Yes, they did. I With think they actual did. interior designers or architects doing <laughs> interior design? A bit of both. So they had both architects doing interior design mm. and kind of like learning on the job. And then they also used to do or still do consulting with interior designers abroad. Okay. So they would bring or they would partner with other interior designers from South Africa, from uh, Malaysia, I think also from the UK to do interior design for particular projects they were working on. It kind of depended on the scope or the depth of the project. Okay, for yeah. our Ugandan audience watching, yes. just tell us quickly, what is the difference between interior design and interior decoration? <laughs> because a lot of people are actually doing interior decoration and they think they're doing interior, interior design. design. What's the difference okay. in just simple words? Okay, so interior design, 
is basically um, starting from scratch of a building or a building plan to uh, make it a functional structure or functional layout. So you basically deal with the arrangement, orientation of rooms and their functionality. You deal with all the finishes. You deal with uh, lighting. Finishes, it's like, let's say, paint, uh, tiles, furniture, fittings, um, equipment, etc, etc. And interior design is very broad because you don't just deal with, like I said, homes or residences. Mm. It has to kind of go across every sort of structure you can imagine. So from hospitals to um, commercial. hotels, yes, yeah. exactly, to commercial buildings, offices, um, I don't know, headquarters, convention centers. There's really a lot to it. And then now mm. interior decoration. Oh, so interior decorating is kind of like your softer finishes. So maybe it, it can also apply to like choosing paint colors, but it's more when somebody comes in when the house or the um, structure is finished, you have your rooms, you have almost even your furniture in place, and then they add things that are complementary. Stuff like curtains, um, cushions, accessories, etc. etc. As an architect, interior design hasn't picked up as much. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm meeting clients, mm -hmm. and uh, I tell them, you know, we should bring in an interior designer, they don't understand it. They always the have this thing of, yes. can't you do what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And you're like, not really. Yes. And uh, you don't also want to get your head wrapped up in that because the structural bit of things has already stressed your head. True. The last thing <laughs> you want <laughs> is, is to, to have to go into it. And I feel like, Many architects feel they can do interior design, but yes. actually they can't. You have to have a special eye for it mm -hmm. and interest and you have to go and kind of as if improve yourself in it before you can engage in it. Mm. I uh, agree. So I totally agree. Um, I think the confusion, especially from the client side, mm. is not really knowing the difference or knowing where interior design starts and interior decorating starts as well because a lot of people believe they can do it for themselves and that it only comes later on in the project when you know almost all the money has been spent or um, they've spent so much time and energy on the structure and the building and then they're like oh finally now we can do stuff on the inside of the house it's not even in the budget it's not even in the budget it's like build the house then like that it's like okay let me think about it. exactly yeah yeah so i think it's because of not really knowing the definition of it and not knowing the value that it adds to the project because i've seen now on so many projects especially people who are building their homes mm -hmm. the issue that comes in is poor planning so from the get-go even if you had let's say like a whole um, lot of space to work with mm. the size of the rooms might not be suited to their function so you end up breaking walls later on yeah. you end up trying to add things here and there whereas it could have been saved you know from high the, ceilings from I the don't start know. you gotta exactly. stop with the high ceilings <laughs> which can get cobwebs and you can't reach there and, and the but place looks defense, like a hole the, in their yeah. defense they'll say that it's really hot so high ceilings are needed <laughs> It's just ventilation, really. Mm. I don't think okay, it all anyway. plays. Yeah, it all plays a role. Um, so I think when people kind of become a bit more um, exposed and well advised, right, from the start of a project, it saves them in time and money and energy to get somebody who's a specialist or a professional on board mm. to like kind of nip that stuff in the bud because as soon as you've got a well-planned house or a development etc the project will run a lot smoother i'm sure you've also seen that yeah um what advice would you give to someone who is considering going into interior design uh, maybe has not trained like you but yeah. there's so many people especially those who have done fine art those who have done industrial arts, they are now going more into interior design. They, they haven't studied, Infinity. but they're going into it. What advice would you give to such a person? Okay, well, to be honest, I would always, always advocate for some kind of training or some kind of um, knowledge in a program that would, you know, kind of complement your work. Another thing I forgot to mention between um, the difference between interior design and interior decorating is that interior designers are trained in, um, what do you call them, working drawings, yeah. right? Which is also a lot of what architects yeah. do. So you can better plan in terms of drawings, in terms of layouts. 
you can also better present your ideas to the client and that is always such a key um, thing when you're going into business to be able to articulate yourself well and to be able to present your ideas before they are put into implementation. implementation. Some kind right? of training. Some kind of training. So even if you can't do like a full-on course, learn a program. There's so many um, online courses, there's so many YouTube tutorials. You can also learn a program from somebody else who's in the industry, mm. right, to complement the work that you're doing. Um, and then also know the value of the work that you're producing. Mm. So if you wanted to charge, um, I don't know how much for a particular job, you kind of have to have the backup to say this is what I'm putting in, this is the what I can I'm produce giving, for you yeah. years, as opposed to somebody else. Because I think there's also just kind of like a, a blur in between what a professional might be able to offer and what somebody who's, who's, doing, yes, who's been practicing in decorating or interior design says that they can do for you. And the difference is quite clear when it comes to like the drawings, when it comes to um, putting across ideas and then finally executing the work, right? Uh, so yeah, I think yeah. those are like two main things. Main thing. What mm. challenges have you found practicing here? I mean challenges in terms of the actual practice, um, mindsets, but also availability of like, the resources you need mm. to be the best that you can be. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, I think one of the main challenges for me, maybe it's a, it's it's just a Ugandan thing, is uh, age, <laughs> which is oh, kind you're of too weird. young. Yes. yes. Oh, which is kind of you weird. people. Maybe it is. Eighty yeah, percent of Ugandans <laughs> are below the age of thirty-five. You know. Yes. So you should expect that most of your professionals who are coming to you are below thirty-five years. Yeah. Yes. Maybe okay. To some level, I think it is also to do with the appearance, right? Because if I say to somebody, oh yes, I've studied this, um, I've worked for, what, like five years now? Mm -hmm. But the outlook in general is just, mm, yeah. are you sure, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. But I think now I'm getting over, over that, I'm getting past it. Mm -hmm. So anytime I kind of meet with somebody who is a little bit doubting, I just let the work speak for itself, True. right? That's uh, one thing. Another challenge maybe has been people who might not be as educated mm. about interior design. So I kind of take it upon myself from the get-go of any project to explain to somebody what value interior design is adding, right? And what also the difference is. So they're clear. And what I like to do as well is outline the scope of the work that I would be doing for them. So whether it is drawings, whether it's providing um, like reliable suppliers, contacts and stuff like that. To yeah, show that you usually that calm them down a bit. Like, it does. Really <laughs> it does, yes. And to kind of be very professional from the get go. So if you present some kind of um, contract or like written up agreement or document that mm -hmm. shows what work you're going to do, um, what your fee structure is like. Um, and then, yeah, it gives the client confidence that, oh, okay, this person is serious and kind of knows what they're dealing with. Yeah. And um, yes, to also present like work that you've done before so if I've done particular project that maybe relate to the job that I'm being offered right with a, a client I'll say okay yes this is like the sort of home or residence uh, designs I've done before this is like the bar stuff I've done before this is uh, offices I've done before mm. it gives people some confidence to see yeah to see what you're capable of doing what about workmanship like have you found challenges with finding good Good um, quality, like yeah. good quality. People can do good quality work, such as like carpenters, painters. Has that been a challenge, or we have it in excess? <laughs> well, I think it is a challenge because maybe depending also on like your um, your standards or your your level of expectations. Mm. There's like a few people who really, really can get it right, but of course at a, a high expense. And unless you find a client who's willing to fork out that kind of money, they'll just go for the ordinary or like typical painters, carpenters, etc. But I would think that by the time you're investing so much in um, an office, a home, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you want to almost get the best of the best, right? You want to get something you that's sustainable. Think. Yes, you would think. <laughs> it's not always the case, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So what I've also started to do um, mm -hmm. is I'll share like contacts with the, with the client and say this is sort of like your high end and get like a comparative quote from them. Um, then this is like the middle 
uh, medium <laughs> end or quality that you can get. You mm. get the coat and the price, and it usually reflects as well. Yeah, like you can get this done for this much, but it won't be, you know, as superb as you're superb. as you're hoping. So you, in the end, you kind of empower the client and you allow them to make that decision. But you of course advise for the best possible outcome. Yeah. So sometimes it's just necessary to spend a little bit more to get that quality and achieve, you know, what you yeah, like. No. So you also have a side hustle <laughs> that I do. Side, she's as a every, business woman. As every Ugandan, as every Ugandan needs to have. <laughs> yes. Uh, tell us about your business and what your business is about. Yeah. Okay. So I started a, a small enterprise called Chai Dishes. Check them out. Yes. So we do flavored herbal specialty. Um, and tea is something that I've always been really passionate about. Maybe beverages in general. Mm. I've always been very passionate about beverages. But tea in particular, because I think it's more of a nostalgic thing for me and also my family. Um, and we've had very, very good experiences around tea or surrounding tea. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's basically where I decided to start it. And initially, um, we had started it almost like as a gift-giving uh, type of experience. So I would only get teas and when I traveled or like sort of gave them out to different people and family members and they'd really appreciate them yeah yeah so tea is it's quite memorable maybe that's why I decided to venture into it where do you get your teas from okay so most of our teas are from South Africa um, and luckily I've got a, a sister a partner <laughs> and a buyer there Fiona mm. um, and then we've just recently started also bringing in teas from the US Although the ones from the US are a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our primary focus has been on the flavored teas that are from South Africa. How did you like set up to start a business in terms of like, did you just say, let's just start this thing and figure it out along the way? Did you write a business plan? How did you finance yes. it? Uh -huh. How did you promote it, market it? Okay. So to be honest, we just started it. <laughs> yeah. Just started it with what we All you have like to just start. Yes, just start. <laughs> Um, the thing is, I knew that the teas were like a, a cheap thing to purchase, right? And you could make like a little bit of profit off of them because there were such unique flavors and flavors that everybody responded to. Um, so I said, you know, let's just start with like, I think it was 200,000 or 250,000. See how many boxes of tea we can get for that. Bring them in and see um, how, they, how the market responds. Them. It responded really well. No, you can then love tea. <laughs> I don't know why we don't. Oh. Yet we grow tea, but I don't yet know why we, we don't tea. make flavor tea. Exactly. And we love tea. Exactly. So in the in the first place, we're like, okay, yes, let's bring in the flavor teas and whatnot. So as we kind of grew, mm. we started to come up now with a business plan. And I don't know if I've shared this with you. So the long term plan is obviously to now produce teas locally. And because oh, wow. we have been yeah, because we have been partnering with um, sort of big, big brand names. Yeah. Um, there's Woolworths and then there's another brand called My Tea Chai in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We've been partnering with them to assist us in developing our own sort of flavors. Oh! Yes, yeah, so that's the long-term goal. That's really nice. That's like amazing. And <laughs> that is. happened when you said the business. Yes, then such exactly. opportunities just found you. Exactly. That's amazing. And yeah. how have you been marketing? Like, how have you been promoting apart from friends and family? Oh, and do you have like a marketing strategy that you've been using <laughs> the marketing strategy has really been based on um yes word of mouth and friends and family mm. but we've also been um advertising on social media so i post a lot of things on twitter mm. i also put up things on whatsapp and send through like different groups etc but i think that it's been really a good opportunity to market through social media because the one it's cheap it's free literally it's free, actually. Um, and then recently we also started marketing through my mother has a, a fitness center called sleek and slender and they also focus a lot on like wellness and health products etc so she has been helping us market her, our products to her clients yeah so that has also grown the that, that so where is it demand. now? You said that two hundred and fifty thousand initial yes. investment. Yes. Right now, how can how would you value your company? The now? company or the um, product? I don't know if you can value it, but now we're making in excess of our orders past a million shillings. shillings yeah. Yeah. So that that's obviously growth. that's one is, year, right? It's yeah, it's growth, and it's in one year. And then that's we also like, that's amazing. It it really is. And then we also registered the company. 
and we made sure that everything was you know sort of like official and in the books and then we can also keep track of how, how much, much stock is selling um, what popular flavors they are what people want to see more so there's a few more exciting things yes. Yes, but now how do you offer. pay yourselves like how mm. do you split profit or do you pay so salary do you put some back in the company because yes. very soon when you start making above a certain amount expect you are to come knocking on exactly. the door you guys are now doing too well <laughs> exactly that's so true so what we've decided to do um, is continue saving the profits so we've been putting back into the business purchasing more and more stock right to make sure that we can earn past a certain profit level and then we'll start paying ourselves right? and if that makes sense mm. yeah okay so right now the structure is made up of three partners yes. and how do you deliver your products like if someone is watching here and i put your contacts like how are they going to find this oh childish <laughs> okay so we usually deliver with our trusty border guy that's the best thing because <laughs> a lot of people might want to just have it delivered to their workplace or to their home so we offer that service mm -hmm. within the um, center of town it's about three thousand to four thousand extra to get it delivered and then uh, we also have a pickup or collection point which is at sleek and slender like i mentioned my mother's been helping us market and sleek and slender is located at plot one katonga road i'm sure you maybe yeah. have said the, above the address above golf course yes exactly. Kampala golf course like, exactly yeah. and right opposite the south sudanese embassy yeah yeah so that's where it is as we leave you have to leave us with some words of wisdom Oh. Yes, especially like for young entrepreneurs who are mm. starting out in this business, mm. young interior designers who are starting out their careers, they've just mm. finished school. Yes. Leave us with three words of kind of advice that they can hold on to. Mm. Okay, my advice would be uh, trust what you are passionate about. I would encourage you to not to give up or to also be consistent because I think I remember there were a lot of times in school when we were all just like over it over the work over the sleepless nights and all of that but eventually we graduated eventually we got there mm. um, and if it is something that you've been thinking about doing for a very long time just start whatever small idea you have just start with whatever little you have whether it's resources or support and all of that and I think the rest will actually come to you because as soon as people realize that you're engaged or that you're passionate about something and that it's also a, like a reliable product or service the responses will come in and we're living in like the best possible time there is technology is available um, there's a lot of encouragement from even just our society mm -hmm. so I think that it's necessary to go for what you are hoping to do right give it your all and then you'll see where it leads i don't think that there's any failure in trying i also think that you always pick yourself up there's so many lessons to learn along the way that will benefit you later in life so yeah that's my advice thank you uh, i'd like to thank rachel for joining us today on this ride and uh, for all that you've shared with us i'll put her information down in this video so that you can get it and thank you for watching bye bye, -bye. I believe the lesson we have learned today is to start. If you have an idea, if you have a passion or a profession you're, you're willing to pursue, the idea is to start. Start with what you have, the resources you have available. Start with that and progress will find you along the way. Another thing is to be persistent, not to give up along the way, however hard it is. And as Albert Einstein is famously quoted, imagination is more important than knowledge. So dream big and pursue your dreams. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.